So today in front of me to unbox is the Tear Class T-Book 16 Power. Now this is the most powerful Atom dual boot tablet you can get at the time of this video. So this one here has an Atom X7 Z8750 with a maximum turbo of 2.56 gigahertz. It's a quad core, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM, runs Android 6.0 and Windows 10 Home. So this one I picked up from AliExpress. I also have the keyboard here to show you that. It's a two-in-one tablet. So it's a removable um, type cover style keyboard. Now the box here looks like it's actually already been opened for some reason, but it's taped up unless they're just reusing other boxes. Now I got this with DHL, so I did have to pay a large amount of taxes on this on arrival here in Spain. They always stop everything. So if you would like to avoid taxes, then I recommend just using the free post method, uh, method and you won't have any taxes there. So there is the, the keyboard, which is the same keyboard as the one used on the T-Book 16S because they do share the same design. And that is open too. I don't know whether Customs or someone has had a look at this. So there is the box. You can see two and one on their PC. There should be the specs listed on the back like they always do. So there's some other specs here that it does have a USB 3 port on there and it also has a USB type C port too, which can output display charge, hopefully do that all at the same time. Uh, one thing I haven't confirmed here is whether or not it has wireless AC or it's just wireless N. I think it's actually wireless AC, but I'll find that out later on in this unboxing video. Alright, so we can see on the rear, this is the kickstand, this pulls up like so, so it's multi-position, it doesn't have a fixed position like some of the earlier models did on other tablets, so that gives you full access, that's all the way back there. Along the side here, that is micro HDMI for video output, a mic, DC in for charging, the Type-C port there, USB 3, and then the headphone jack right there. So behind this little flap here is where the micro SD card is located, which I don't particularly like it when they have them covered with flaps because I'm a person that swaps micro SD cards out quite often. So I kind of find that a little bit annoying. Now along the top here, these uh, power buttons. Now they are made out of plastic, just like the housing all around the outside. That's all made out of like an ABS plastic. And along the back, this is metal, by the way, the kickstand, that is metal, that's an alloy on the back here. And here we have a rear-facing 2 megapixel camera. And on the front, a front-facing 2, sorry, the rear one is 5 megapixel and this one's 2 megapixel. And here, a Windows Home button. So have a look and see what else is included in the box. So this will just be some instruction things, whatnot. Uh, that's basically, I'm not going to go into that. That's a still Chinese warranty card, all that sort of stuff, but uh, I don't understand any of that. And then we, of course, will have our charger right here. So it's a little power supply. So a USB to DC plug, and then the charger this time around with of course the two prong US style. Now this is rated to 5 volts, 2.5 amps. I thought that would have been actually 3 amps. So that's interesting. And I'll just take the weight of it too. Let's see how heavy it is. It feels quite solid. And it's uh, 891 grams. So yeah, that's not the lightest. I just have a look at the keyboard. So the keyboard, as mentioned, type cover one. And I found that the, the, the T-Book 16 keyboard, which is the same exact one, it's not bad at all. So we have like a, a felt material on the back, soft suede felt material, and along the front, a keyboard which I found was actually really good to type on, but the touchpad there you'll see has one serious flaw 
but it's not very high. It's wide enough, but it's not high enough. And I did find this to be particularly annoying when using this because it often would trigger gestures and things like that. But we've got all the, the main function keys on there. We've got a couple of media ones. Brightness control, at least it's good to see that is there. Uh, the recent Chewy Lapbook I reviewed didn't have any shortcut for brightness on the keyboard, which I found to be annoying. Okay, so let's get this powered up. Okay, so hopefully there's some power in this. Normally they do come with power out of the factory, so this should boot up. And you see there, Techlast logo, T-Book. So we have the typical Techlast dual boot selected as an Android or Windows. I'm going to go into Android here first. Alright, so this is their first Android 6 ROM and I can see straight away that the icons are really quite large as well as those on-screen buttons there. Um, I don't know what DPI they have used here, but it seems like it's a very large one. Let's have a look now at uh, the settings. We have here, so memory, 1.1 gigabytes used and we have free 6.6 uh, .6 there. So not bad, plenty of RAM there. Now have a look at uh, how much free storage now we have on there. So 19.56 is what we've got partitioned for Android 6. The rest of that will go to Windows, 64 gigabyte eMMC they have on there. And the version 2, so 6.0.1. So we've got a few blower applications. You can see those. Normally you can uninstall most of those. So there's only oh, one, three bloatware apps for four or five. Play Store is of course there. And I just see that most of these we should just be able to get rid of. Yeah, so I can uninstall those. I think one of the ones you can't get rid of is the ES File Explorer could actually be part of the ROM. So at least that bloat can be removed there. I just see there should be now a shortcut here just to boot straight into Windows. So holding down the power button and no, restart. Unless it's through the restart menu, I don't think it is. There's nothing here that just says Windows. So it looks like we're missing that shortcut. So I'll boot over now into Windows. And we'll have a look at the hardware. See if it has wireless AC. Okay, so swapping over, I had to go through the menu again, select Windows, boot. The whole process took about 30 seconds. And it doesn't look to be any shortcuts to go straight from Windows into Android either, which is a little bit unfortunate there. So I have a look now in the system. Check out and see what we have for Windows, what it's running. You can see the 8 gigabytes of RAM listed, of course. And Windows is activated, Windows 10 Pro. Let's also have a look at free available space. We have 18.4 gigabytes free. So Windows Pro is taking up a little bit more space then than Home, I think. Not a lot of free space there to play with. And in the device manager. I can see that's taken a while to load up. There you go. So disk drive is a Samsung CWB. C3. Uh, I will benchmark that later on and the benchmark as well as all my typical benchmarks I like to run and the network card is a unfortunately real tech wireless N so it doesn't have wireless AC which is a real shame because the rest of the spec is there at least having that faster atom processor. 8 gigabytes of RAM is something we don't normally see. So here we see the memory is running at 1600 megahertz now that is dual channel, so it's not like the single channel Atom Z8300s. Here we should have a lot more memory bandwidth. Now it does support an active stylus. Unfortunately, both of the tech last styluses that I do have, this was the one here that worked on the T-Book 16, and I assumed it would work on this one because it has the same screen. But it seems I'm wrong there. They have changed the, the digitizer for the stylus, or it's a different brand or something, because this pen isn't actually working on the screen here. Now it will be something like this one with uh, 256 levels of pressure sensitivity. So it's just a shame that this one doesn't work. So whatever you do, do not get the T-Book 16 stylus. Make sure you get the one that supports the T-Book 16 power here.
just to see if it's going to power an external hard drive because a lot of these tablets have failed at this such a simple little test. Okay, it's looking good. And Windows has just come up. So that is working in an external hard drive, which is good. Now I have a Type-C cable here too, so I'm going to check and see if it will actually charge via the Type-C port. And it looks like yes. So just having a look at the screen, I can see that the brightness well indoors here looks okay so far. It's not the brightest screen. Now the same thing happened with the T-Book 16S, which uses the same panel. It's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio 1080p display. And it doesn't seem to be the brightest. I'll measure that later on in the full review. But I mean, that's okay now with indoor use. And I do have some bright lights on here, so I'll test that out later on. And just like the T-Book 16S, of course, the same design. We've only got the both of the stereo speakers on the right-hand side, which is a little annoying because we're not going to get the stereo separation that we normally get when they're on either side. So let's have a listen to how they sound. All right, so they have a little bit of volume to them, but at 100% volume, they had some distortion there that you might have heard picked up on the microphone with my camera. That they had a tiny little bit of like vibration distortion coming through them. Yeah, they sound all right, I guess, but not not the greatest really. Now, just to touch on the touchpad, that the up and down gesture to minimize and maximize is actually disabled. That doesn't work, which is a good thing because it is so short, the touchpad here. The width of it, it's fine, but I'm just moving around here, and the accuracy of it seems good. It's quite sensitive. It does support the double tap gesture. In fact, it doesn't. I oh, know there it is. That works, but the up and down, that annoying one that I often trigger, at least that isn't working. So, I mean, it's it's a usable touchpad, but it's definitely not the greatest. There are, of course, hardware left and right mouse buttons too there. Okay, so that's the T-Book 16 Power, just my unboxing, and my first impressions are good. The build of it is very solid, just like the T-Book 16S. Well made, there's no flex in the design. The kickstand on the back is also quite practical because it's not set at a fixed angle. I also think the screen looks reasonably good, but I would like it to be a little bit brighter there. The typing experience on the keyboard is good, but the touchpad I don't particularly like because it's just too short, it's not high enough and not really the greatest to use, even though the sensitivity on it seems to have been notched up, so it's at least a little bit more accurate and more sensitive to help compensate for that, but still not really the greatest. The speakers as well, they have a little bit of volume to them, but they did have some distortion there too. So performance of the Atom X7 Z 8750. I'll be checking that out in full detail in the review. Benchmarks gaming as well just to see how well that's going to perform in both Android and Windows. So hopefully I will catch you back with the full review of the T-Book 16 Power here soon. Thank you so much for watching this video.